we have another colleague of mine, Andrew Biba from Integration Team, uh, Integration Team Lead at Zabbix, and he will be talking about Zabbix Utils. Um, I did see people making some noise about this, being quite excited about Zabbix Utils. It's out. And let's hear from Andrew. He will tell you about the official Python library for Zabbix API. Andrew, you are very much welcome. Hi, Artos. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can see you. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Yes, we can see the screen. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrei Biba, and I'm integration team lead. And today I want to tell you about uh, our new Python library uh, called Zabbix Utils. Um, we released it about five months ago and keeping updating it and implementing a new features, yeah? So um, what should you know about the library? Yeah, uh, the first and uh, the main thing here is, uh, of course, uh, it's officially supported, yeah? Officially supported by us, by uh, integration team. And it means that every feature and uh, every new new stuff that will be coming in Zabbix will be supported in a library. Um, Zabbix Utils consists of uh, three uh, three uh, classes. It's uh, Zabbix Get, Zabbix Sender, and Zabbix API. Uh, Zabbix Get it's a utility to work with the agent, so you can um, uh, you can get data directly from agent and process it somehow. Uh, Zabbix Sender, it's, uh, it's a utility to send the data. So for example, if you get the data from agent, process it somehow and send it to uh, Zabbix using Zabbix Sender. Yeah, um, for example, you can use Zabbix Strapper item, yeah. And the um, most interesting part here is of course Zabbix API. I guess uh, because of the, this, uh, all this library was created uh, and uh, you can use uh, it to uh, manage and work with Zabbix because API covers a lot of function classes and stuff uh, in Zabbix itself, yeah. Um, also, we are using Zabbix Utils now in our own, own tools, and this means that we have a genuine interest to update it and support all, all the latest, latest feature. Uh, when we develop uh, our Zabbix, uh, our, uh, Zabbix uh, Python library, we try to uh, uh, use all the experience of the community. And we look through uh, all the popular community solutions for Python, uh, for a Python uh, API, and we try to apply it in our in real uh, and make it in our library. Yeah, and because of this, um, uh, this library um, become really comfortable with all this code. If if in case if you have uh, already worked with. Uh, uh, Zabbix API and using Python and you have some code, it would be easy to move to our library because it's very compatible. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, Zabbix Utils officially support uh, Zabbix 5.0 and above. And this means that we have tested it and uh, uh, we will fix some issues about these versions. Uh, it, it also may support the lesser versions, um, because we try to write a code as universal as possible, but we can't guarantee and um, we can't guarantee it will work properly, but it should. <laughs> okay, and um, Zabbix Utils works on Python 3.8 and uh, above. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't work uh, on two, on Python 2, but I think in the modern world, everyone already moved to um, Python 3. Um, separately, I would like to talk about asynchronous uh, functionality. Yeah, uh, it's not implemented yet in the Zabbix Utils um, in any releases, but um, right now it's almost ready. Uh, so we almost uh, ready to publish it, uh, but uh, it's uh, in internal uh, review stage right now. Um, uh, so why we decide to implement uh, synchronous functionality? 
uh, because using it uh, will improve uh, the performance, uh, resource utilization, and mostly importantly, will allow to make um, a parallel requests. Uh, regarding the API, it making especially a lot of benefits of using async functionality. If you're already using, uh, uh, if you're already working with um, uh, with a Zabbix API and have some solutions on Python, uh, synchronous Zabbix utils will help you um, to make uh, your requests in parallel and greatly increase the time of execution. So maybe I should talk a little bit about what is Zabbix API in case if someone doesn't know what is it and doesn't work with that. So um, Zabbix API, it's a um, HTTP-based uh, API, and it uh, goes with uh, uh, as a part of uh, uh, of a web in interface. And that means uh, when you install the Zabbix web interface, you're ready to go and use API. Um, uh, Zabbix API allows you to retrieve all the uh, uh, retrieve and modify configuration of Zabbix and provides access to the historical data. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, take a look uh, at a simple example how to make such a request. Yeah, to make it, uh, you need to make an um, HTTP uh, HTTP re uh, POST request. And you should use, uh, uh, in, in my example, I'm using curl. It's a simple tool to making HTTP requests. Yeah, and in this example, we're using a method API info version. And um, using this method, uh, API returns us a um, result with the current Zabbix version. Yeah, so in the second example, you can see how it looks like. Um, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of different uh, methods, not just uh, info, uh, not just a version. Yeah, so uh, you can use uh, Zabbix API to cover a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, jobs um, to do uh, with uh, Zabbix. Yeah, so Zabbix API is a powerful tool uh, that allows user uh, to interact with the Zabbix monitoring system. Uh, it provides um, a way to automate task, uh, fetch uh, monitoring data, uh, manage hosts and alerts, and perform various uh, administrative functions. Uh, by using API, uh, users can integrate Zabbix with other system and create custom monitoring solution. Um, so let's talk about uh, how to use Zabbix Python library in, in your project if you're not, um, not did it uh, before with other, uh, uh, other um, community solutions yeah uh here's some examples and first of all uh first uh, i think i want to tell about external integration yeah uh in case if you have some custom services and yeah i think all this example mostly about custom services because uh zabbix covers all mostly all the default uh default protocols and services yeah uh, but maybe not uh, all, but uh, a lot of them. So in case if you have some custom service, uh, you can use uh, Zabbix utils uh, and Python to write some middleware daemon uh, to be a bridge uh, between your Zabbix and your custom service. So you can um, use uh, Zabbix API to make some API requests, get some data, maybe events, uh, 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 process it somehow, maybe write a query uh, and uh, um, uh, enrich it with some data and send you to uh, to your uh, custom service. Yeah. Some other example here is, uh, of course, monitoring solutions. In case if uh, uh, you don't have uh, uh, required uh, solution in already existing uh, default uh, solutions in Zabbix itself, you can use uh, Python and Python utils to write some uh, uh, some some code to get, gather this data. Yeah, you can gather it, process it again, and send it to Zabbix using Zabbix utils. Um, uh, also, it could be done for as gathering Zabbix statistic. Yeah, you can collect the NVPS, the number of hosts, quantity of templates, and some other 
uh, useful data for what what you need. Yeah, you can automate it in using uh, just not a single uh, single um, instance, but multiple instance collecting this data processes maybe for visualizing or for analyzing stuff. Yeah, so it could be useful in this way as well. Um, uh, another another example of using is inverter export. You can export uh, historical data, trends, uh, costs, uh, configurations, templates, and other stuff. Maybe if you like to um, um, uh, in, in, uh, to make uh, uh, versioning of your templates, yeah, using Zabbix Utils and Python to export it and make it uh, uh, scheduling or sometime, uh, yeah. So it would be pretty useful. Um, Zabbix automation, yeah, it's maybe one of the obvious uh, obvious way to use the Zabbix utils, yeah, because uh, uh, as I said before, Zabbix API covers um, a lot of aspects of the Zabbix, and you can set a maintenance periods, create groups, uh, user groups, uh, maybe export import templates, yeah, so. Uh, if and if you have a lot of Zabbix instances, it may be like 10, 20, or 100. Yeah, it could be easily done using uh, the this uh, Zabbix utility. Uh, okay, okay. So a little bit statistic. Um, um, since we released the library, uh, we have about seven uh, um, seven thousand downloads, and this number is growing. And we hope that more and more people will start using it over time. Yeah, we're already noticing that uh, uh, forks are creating from our library, and this means people uh, uh, like to use our code as a base for improvements. And uh, it also means we have a room for improvements for as well. Um, uh, since uh, we published it, our library we had six releases um, that's fixing minor bugs. Uh, implementing the new features and improving existing code. Uh, and as I said, the next release is re uh, really close uh, as we done with our async functionality. Uh, I think it may be a week or so, there, there gonna be a new release. Okay, so that's it about statistic. And I guess the question is uh, right now is how to start using Zabbix Utils. Um, uh, the first place where uh, I would recommend you to go, it's of course uh, our GitHub. Uh, I think it's pretty easily, uh, you can pretty easy to Google it, yeah, and Google something like Python, Zabbix Utils, or Python Zabbix library, and I think you can find it. So what you can find here, it's, uh, you can find here uh, useful examples, how to start using, how to, uh, how to install it, and, and stuff like that. So we try to make uh, uh, documentation about it, yeah. Also, you can find all these releases um, that's ready to go to use in in a, in a, the side menu on the GitHub. Um, in case uh, if you like to use it uh, as a raw code, you can download raw and start using it in this way. So please come to GitHub page, subscribe, leave us a star, and maybe you like to leave us an issue. So yeah, you can go uh, open issues and we are open to any your suggestions so we could make uh, this library even better. Okay, so uh, the second part, it's of course uh, Python, uh, Python, uh, Python packet manager, Peep, yeah, so you can go to Pipey org and find here and easily install it using peep install Zabbix utils and you're mostly mostly instantly ready to go. There's nothing more to do. And um, um, well, and I think uh, is the mo uh, is a is a part where you can find information about uh, about uh, Zabbix utils. It's our uh, blog Zabbix.com. Uh, my uh, colleague Alexander Janssen wrote, wrote a nice article here that explaining uh, all the details about uh, our new library. Uh, by the way, he is a main maintainer about uh, uh, maintainer of this uh, library. So please go there and check this uh, um, uh, this article. 
Uh, I believe it, it's uh, available right now, not on just in English, but also some other languages. So let's go, uh, go there and check uh, check uh, for um, for information about our new library. And um, maybe uh, a short uh, short um, example of how to start using it in case if you uh, never work with uh, Python. Uh, and um, let's let's take a closer look here. So first of all, we should uh, in, after you install it, yeah, in various way how you like it more. Uh, after you install it, you should import uh, import the required method here. Uh, in this example, we're using Zabbix API. I will remember you Zabbix uh, uh, um, Zabbix utils right now have. Um, uh, three uh, three classes. It's Zabbix API, uh, Zabbix Sender, and Zabbix Getter. Yeah, and uh, after importing the required classes, um, you just um, uh, set uh, uh, address of your Zabbix. Uh, in, the, in this example, it's a local host. Yeah, and uh, after that, you're using logging parameters, uh, user uh, and password. You may just you uh, you also can use an API. Uh, you can use a token, yeah, to to log in. But in this case, we're using just login and password. And here you go. In the sixth line, you're uh, just making requests to get all the users and filter it by user ID and name. And for result, we're just printing the names of the users and logging out and closing the session. Um, yes, of course, it's a, just a simple example, but I think it uh, shows really good how this um, how this library works. Yeah, and um, it's uh, I think it's pretty easy to start using it in your own project and solve your uh, your some problems with that could uh, could be. Okay, so mostly that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention, and also please come to Zabbix blog because we are going to publish soon additional additional article about uh, about uh, our library. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. We have a couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. We also have a question for Christophs, which uh, Christophs will try and cover um, via text. Um, regarding this current presentation, so first off, are Ansible modules also coming? I think this was, uh, let's see, this was uh, this was probably also for Christops, by the way. I'm not sure. Ansible modules. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what was this this related to. I guess it makes more sense Oracle-wise. Not sure. Uh, but question for you is Zabbix Utils. Can it work with Python Graph API Microsoft 365 library to help us monitor Microsoft 365 Entra ID, Azure Active Directory audit logs. Any examples or use cases? Mm. Uh, I can't say it for sure, yeah, but I think it should work. I see no problem here. Uh, if uh, um, I think generally I, I, speaking, Zabbix API can play nice with with anything especially with the python util you will find a way to to format the request and, and retrieve the data and work with it so i'm, I'm not seeing how that could be yeah i just want to say if uh, if some solution was already used like maybe some some other uh, community solutions to so uh, if it's working with a, a graph api um, i think it should work with zabbix utils as well mm -hmm. Yeah, and as for more examples, like Andrew said, uh, we have our blog post with some examples, more to come. Um, so if you're still not using it, just starting out, check out the blog post and also the recording of this presentation will also be available on our YouTube channel. So you can slowly follow it, then move to the blog and give it a try yourself. So thank you, Andrew.